Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how to construct the nine point circle, which is also referred to as Euler's circle. And you can see here that we've got this triangle ABC. And the thing we're constructing is this circle right here. And for any triangle I have, there's always an Euler circle. And what the circle does, well, one of the things it does that's super cool, is it crosses two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine key points. I've color coded them here for myself, and I've got, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Get that. Okay. It's hard to see the letter there. I'm trying to move that letter. Uh, but this is point F, let's say, H and G, those blue points. What are those points? Well, those points are the midpoints of the segments of the triangle and the circle crosses all of them, which is really cool right away. And then in orange, I have O, M, and N. And those, what are they? Well, they are the feet of the altitude. So remember, altitude is just um, a line you drop from the vertex down to represent the height of the triangle. So like from C down to this segment here at N, that's an altitude, and this point N is where the altitude hits essentially the base of the triangle, or if it's obtuse, let me go like this, or if it's obtuse, you can see if I drop the altitude, it's where it hits where the base would be if it were extended, right? You have to extend this out to represent the height of the triangle. But aside from the obtuse case, it's a little bit, makes a little more sense to see the um, foot of the altitude inside the circle. And the Euler circle has all one, two, three of those altitude locations. And also has these points in pink, uh, J, K, and L. And what are those points? Well, it's a little bit hard to see, but um, what those points represent is the midpoint between the vertex, let's say, of this um, location at C, the midpoint between C and the orthocenter of your triangle. And the orthocenter, in my case, is here at point E. And the orthocenter is where the altitudes meet. So like these orange lines are my altitude, one, two, three, they cross here at E. That's the orthocenter. Here's the vertex. Halfway between them is L, and that's on the Euler circle. Go over here. Here's the vertex B. Orthocenter E, halfway between is K. That's on the Euler circle. And over here is the vertex A, and the orthocenter E, halfway between it is J. And um, those nine points are all on the Euler circle. Where is the center of the Euler circle? What's well, here at I? And that's on, a, on the midpoint between E and D, and one of those things. Well, E, again, that's the orthocenter, the intersection of the altitudes, and D over here is the circumcenter. It's the center of all of the perpendicular bisectors. So like this right here is a perpendicular bisector. This line going through G and, and D is a perpendicular bisector, and D and H, that line is a perpendicular bisector. They meet at the circumcenter, and that's a point that is equidistant from all the vertex, vertices, excuse me, but it's also the center of this circumcircle, this circle that goes around the triangle. So it's the center of both those things. And halfway between the orthocenter and circumcenter is the center of the Euler circle. So we can actually construct this pretty quickly. What we need to do, and I'll show you this next, is construct a triangle and then create the perpendicular bisectors find where they meet to get our circumcircle. Then we can set up our altitudes, find where they meet at the orthocenter, connect those two things with a segment, and that gives us the center of our Euler circle, drag the radius to a midpoint, and then add some other key points along the way. So let's get started. All right, so I've got this blank template to work with in GeoGebra, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go here and create a triangle. So A to B to C, and close it. Now what I'm going to do is create my perpendicular bisector. So over here there are some options and you can see I have angle bisectors, perpendicular lines, and what we need here is perpendicular bisectors. If I click that, all I need to do is select the endpoints A and C, and I get my first perpendicular bisector. Repeat that again with C and B, and then repeat that again with B and A. And those are my three perpendicular bisectors, and they're meeting here at the circumcenter. So if I go to point, I can find the intersection of those three lines really quickly. There it is. 
And I can go to my circle tool, circle with center through point. If I go from D to B, or I can go from D to C, or D to A, I get my circumcircle. So I'm just going to just test this real quick. Move it around. I can move the triangle to see, is it working? Does it make sense? All right, it seems pretty good. Uh, we've got our perpendicular bisectors, the circumcenter, and the circumcircle. Okay, now let's drop some altitudes. So what we need is to go here, and we want a perpendicular line. So for example, if I want an altitude coming from point B to this segment here, all I need to do is click B, and then the segment I want it to be perpendicular to. Then I repeat the process with C and the opposite segment, and then A and the opposite segment, and now I've got my three altitudes. Okay, that's, it's hard to look at at this point. We can change colors and things in a moment, but I, I just want to acknowledge, okay, that's a little overwhelming. So what can I do next? All right, well, I need to find where my three altitudes meet, and since I can't really tell what they are, I'm going to change their colors. So if I go here, that's one way to do it, I can change the altitude colors. I'm going to make them all orange. That'll make it a little bit easier for me to see what's going on. And altitudes are easier to spot than uh, easy to spot because they go through the vertices, while the perpendicular bisectors don't ne necessarily do that. So these are my three altitudes. Now it's a little bit easier to see. And in this case, um, we want to find where do those things meet. And actually, I mislabeled this one. Sorry, that is not altitude. This is an altitude. Boom. So there they meet at that point. Okay, let's identify that. This tool has points, midpoints, and intersections. So let's do the intersection of those three. And that is the orthocenter. Now, if I want to find my the center of my Euler circle, I'm going to connect with the segment E and D. Orthocenter to circumcenter. And I can construct the midpoint of this, but I'm just going to use the midpoint tool because we've done those kind of constructions already. And that finds the midpoint F, which is the center of the Euler circle. Now, the Euler circle, the nine point circle, has nine key points in it. So let's generate some of those points. Um, at the feet of the altitudes, let's do those here, here, and here. And let's color code those so that they actually look like orange and match what we have around for altitudes. Boom. Now let's repeat that process for the points at the intersection of the perpendicular bisector and the segment. So here, and we want to do, let's do, um, I don't know, purple. And we can change all the, um, all the perpendicular bisectors to purple in just a moment. Purple and purple. And if I want to change the actual lines to purple to color code, I'm going to click this, go to purple, purple, and purple, and maybe not the best color choice, but at least it helps me distinguish what I'm actually looking at. Okay, the Euler circle, go here, circle tool, oh, I don't need that, go to undo, and go from F, which is the halfway point of the ortho and circumcenter, and just drag the radius any one of those nine key points. Any one of them it captures them all, you see that? So I'm gonna go to L over here. And now before we go any further, I'm just gonna test this and see how it's working. Uh, no, no big problems here. It seems to be working pretty well. Okay. Last thing is I want to establish the midpoint between a vertex and the orthocenter to get the last three points. So the orthocenter, we should probably color code that as well. That's this point E. I'm going to make that orange as well. And so there's the orthocenter and here's a vertex. Let's get the midpoint of that segment. So from E to C, I get M. That midpoint and then from E to B I get that midpoint and then from E to A I get that midpoint and those right there I'm going to color code as well I'm going to make them let's say pink let's do this one is pink and this one is pink here I think I just made a straight point let me fix that undo I think I was not on the right tool, so I want to be on the move tool. So this should be pink, and this should be pink. Boom. Okay. I think we have everything we need. So you, now we have a the Euler circle, which is this right here, and I'm going to 
um, change that in a moment. But just just realize when I'm dragging this around, I can drag the points on the triangle, but I can't drag every point. Like if I try to drag some of the other points, nothing happens. Some will move, some will not. Um, that's because this is a construction and um, some of the points are dependent on others, right? So I can move B and then everything inside the triangle and connect to the triangle will then change. Uh, I just want to clean this up a little bit. So let's make our Euler circle really stand out. I don't need that point. Let's go to my move tool, click the circle. And again, I can just get the over here, I get my uh, ability to change the color. Click on this. You can lightly see what the colors are. I'm going to pick, I think, a different color and just kind of shade it in to see what it looks like. I'll make it green for now. And then, I, you know, if I don't like these colors, I can pick other ones. Let's pick uh, this green right here. All right. Okay. So now the Euler circle stands out just a little bit more. And you can, again, really change that to make it uh, stand out. So there's the Euler circle. And a lot of these other things don't need to be so bold. So like this segment right here, I'm going to click on the line thickness and just bring it down to one. And I can do that for all of the things that were constructions for making this circle that I don't really want to stand out. Just click them and drag it down. You can do dashed lines. Just make sure that um, if you have like a set, let's say of altitudes, for example, you want to look clean, they should probably match, right? So like bring them down to the, maybe the same thickness. I'm going to do one in each case here. One, boom. So what this, what that does, and you, you might, you know, you might disagree with me. You might not want to do that exact color coding. Um, I like to see those lines a little bit, but kind of in the background. And if you think one is too skinny, you can't really see it. You can make it larger. Final touch. I go to point F and make it match the color of our circle, which I think is looks like that. Pretty close match. And you could even change it to a caption and send instead of um, just a letter. So let's see if we can do that. Now you can't right, do it easily here, the caption. So you might have to go into the menu and maybe we shouldn't do that just yet, but let's see if I can get to it. No, I actually can't get to the menu here uh, in this, what I have set up for you here in GeoGebra. So I'm just leave the name out for now. And that's it. This is the idea of the construction behind the nine point circle. And you can play with it and see if you get some any interesting results. All right, thanks.